it's not even close. It's not even just- The Windows Touch experience feels kind of shoehorned in. I suspect Valve has integrated no such functionality. Windows is a notorious resource hog. But they told us that the Windows drivers were gonna come. It's a constant, annoying, and unnecessarily slow process. And Linux actually manages to squeeze more out of the hardware than Windows. It's so slow, especially when Windows is doing whatever the hell it does in the background. Like Linux just ran away from Windows. And Windows is just plain worse than most other operating systems. It was, it was a bloodbath. On the Steam Deck, it was just annihilation. That installing Windows on the Steam Deck will be the biggest mistake that you could make on that hardware. Are you sure about that? <gasps> hey guys, Turk here, hope you're having a good one. Now that the dust has settled and the Steam Deck has been out for about two months at this point, many of the larger tech oligarchs have left for greener and brighter pastures, and it's time for the true fans of the Steam Deck to emerge and do Lord Gaben's work. Now, just over a month ago, Valve released the Windows graphics drivers for the Steam Deck, and judging by the reception here on the internet.com, there's been a lot of videos hyper-criticizing the, co the combination and just saying how terrible Windows is on the Steam Deck. Now, I'm going to be addressing and critiquing some of those videos later in the video, but my primary issue with the videos is they're comparing a well-polished experience from Valve with their Steam OS 3 versus a haphazard approach with their driver release with Windows. That's like comparing the original Ryzen 1000 series launch with all of its BIOS issues and mem memory configuration problems to the more established Ryzen 5000 series launch with a mature platform, mature driver support, and putting those up head to head is just not a fair comparison. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at Windows versus Linux performance on a handheld using both stable operating systems and stable graphics drivers. Now for Windows, we're going to be using Windows 11 with the latest Radeon driver support. And for Linux, we're going to be using Ubuntu 20.04 with Mesa 21.2.5. Now I know a lot of y'all are going into the comments saying, Turk, you shouldn't be using Ubuntu. It's terrible. It's for plebs. Only newbies would do it. Now I agree. I don't typically use Ubuntu and it really felt kind of cringe installing it on my device. However, it's the only distribution out there that had the right screen orientation, Wi-Fi driver support, as well as actual touchscreen support for my handheld device. I tried Fedora, it didn't have my network drivers. I tried Manjaro and I had to do some additional terminal command line in order to rotate the screen properly. And I even tried Chimera OS to get more of a GUI approach, but that ended up corrupting my SSD and I had to start it all over from square one. So Ubuntu 2004, as unpopular as it is, it is more stable than what's out there in a handheld device. So if you guys were curious just how well Ubuntu performs compared to some of the other operating systems, I'll post a link in the description to some videos I found helpful, because at the end of the day, on this level of hardware, all the different distros are going to perform pretty much similar. But I'm getting carried away with myself. What device am I actually going to be testing on? Now, over the past nine months, I've gotten a lot of criticism from you guys saying that you don't like me using my overclocked Steam Deck hacking deck. So to put that criticism to rest, I went ahead and invested some of the AdSense money we've gotten here on the channel, and I managed to pick up the best AMD handheld that I could find. No, I didn't go over to eBay and help sponsor some of these scalpers that are charging 12, 14, 1600 bucks for a Steam Deck. I picked up the One X player using the 5700U. And in fact, I've actually got the 5800U being shipped to me today, so I'll be doing that review here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed to get that information whenever I get it. Now, this has got the AMD 5700U, which is slightly slower than the Steam Deck's custom APU, but given the amount of power we're allocating to it with the turbo button, about 28 watts, we should get pretty comparable results. So now that I've got actual hardware to do a direct head-to-head -head comparison with Lin Windows versus Linux, I had to go all out with my game selection. In previous videos, we only looked at, you know, five to eight games, but today we're expanding it to 18 games. We're including everything that works in both Linux and in Windows, including Apex Legends, all the way down to Total War Warhammer 2, or even Wolfenstein Youngblood. With all that said, let's jump to the charts. 
So I'm going to be looking at these games alphabetically, and our first batch of games all hover between 32 FPS and 53 FPS, which is a pretty decent performance range coming from a handheld device. Apex Legends was enabled with Proton just a while ago, and sure enough, its performance beats Windows by a single frame. Keep in mind, this game's performance varies drastically by the different maps as well as the location in the map, so I've had to average in performance over three different matches with similar playstyle approaches. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, on the other hand, hammers the GPU even at our resolution and detail settings, and Windows wins with a comfortable lead. Both operating systems are playable here, but the extra performance buffer with Windows is just hard to ignore. Similar can be said about Borderlands 3, though the margin is a bit tighter than Valhalla, and the overall experience is about the same. Control follows Apex's lead with a 1 FPS win on Linux, though both platforms run just fine. Cyberpunk is barely playable on our 5700U 1X player, suggesting that the improvements with RDNA 2 definitely push the Steam Deck into far more favorable territory. Regardless, pretty similar performance is had on both operating systems. Doom Eternal sees comparable performance for both Windows and Ubuntu on our 1X player, but will it continue to hold up in the next batch? The next six games add more recent games to the mix, and our first samples are able to achieve 60 FPS gameplay. Despite its successful launch, many have found that Elden Ring on the PC can be surprisingly choppy at times. In sharp contrast though, gaming on Ubuntu with Proton works around some of these performance issues with its ability to pre-cache shaders of the game. Despite the technical achievement, Windows can still drive above 30 FPS in the earlier parts of Limgrave, while Ubuntu struggles and it stays just below 30 FPS. F1 2020 surges ahead with above 60 FPS experience for both OSs, but Windows does drive ahead with additional margin to pad its 1% lows. Forza Horizon 5 sees a similar delta between the software solutions, though Windows barely misses 60 FPS. Far Cry 6 adds another W to the column for Windows, though the victory is less satisfying than either of our racing games. God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn are both running at their original detail settings, but God of War slides just below the Steam Deck's PlayStation 4 caliber performance. As for the operating system, Ubuntu gets the 1 FPS nod on both counts. As we turn down the home stretch, Ubuntu manages to match or win in four of these games. Metro Exodus looks particularly good even with the low detail preset, with a decent bit of buffer right at 44 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 also squeezes just past the 30 FPS threshold with about 10% margin to spare. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is running its native Linux application, and it follows suit of Metro here, with Ubuntu taking a slim lead. And if that wasn't enough, Total War Warhammer 2's native Linux application also pulls ahead of the Windows version, though the lead is less noticeable. However, Windows takes back the lead with Watch Dogs Legion with enough spare FPS to keep above the 30 FPS barrier. And Wolfenstein Youngblood performs a bit better, though much less noticeable. With 18 games under our belt, let's sort the data and put it all into perspective. With Windows, the only game that really isn't playable is God of War, with a paltry 23 FPS. Engaging FSR or reducing the quality down to the low setting will be required to get playable settings. Beyond that though, a 30 FPS experience is achievable for most games today, with the only notable, unacceptable performance coming from Apex, Doom, Youngblood, and arguably Forza Horizon 5. Now taking a look at Ubuntu 20.04, results scale less well as Windows, and we have to chalk up another sub-30 FPS experience to Elden Ring. However, a larger amount of games are now borderline playable, including Far Cry 6, Borderlands 3, Watch Dogs, and Assassin's Creed. In fact, if we take a look at the difference in performance between Ubuntu and Windows, many games are impacted by colossal performance deltas compared to Windows. Though the 13 and FPS drops with Forza and F1 are less catastrophic for Ubuntu, the 5 to 8 FPS drops for some of these other games can cause a game from being a comfortable 40 FPS experience to a choppy 30 FPS experience. Now that we've got all the data on hand, it's time to criticize some of the videos talking about Windows on the Steam Deck. First off, and I'll actually use Linus's own words here. I can already tell that this is running like absolute dog poo on Windows compared to Linux. 
Sorry, Linus, this just isn't true. Both Windows and the hardware are able to handle the applications just fine. It's just Valve's implementation of the graphics driver is just really shoddy at this point. You and I have both done hardware reviews with some less than ideal graphic driver support, but in those reviews, you gave them a little bit of extra grace. So comparing the finely polished Steam OS version versus this sort of beta version of a Windows driver, it's just not a fair comparison. Next, Linus is just cherry picking games from a works great on deck list. Fun fact, many gamers don't play games that are on this list, and by artificially picking these types of games, you're skewing your results to one conclusion, and that conclusion at this point is really biased and is not an accurate indication of a broad spectrum of games. And to me, this just seems really disingenuous as a hardware reviewer. Now, a lot of the critiques that Linus and many reviewers have been putting out there regarding, you know, button support, haptic support, and all the other features not working well in Windows, that just shows that Valve hasn't put enough time into their device. And I actually agree with a lot of these reviewers say, and that you should be sticking with Steam OS when it comes to the Steam Deck. However, if you go to timecode 1628 in the video, Linus even admits, I mean, theoretically, the same hardware should perform very similarly across Windows and Linux, and this, our results were not even close. And to me, that should be what you went out with at the very beginning of the video, instead of biasing your results to a particular conclusion. In conclusion, there's several different takeaways to consider when talking about our handheld devices, especially with the Steam Deck. When given access to a stable and reliable graphics driver, there's just much more performance that's available to a Windows gaming system. As for Windows on the Deck, at the end of April 2022, I just don't think that the Steam Deck is ready for Windows itself. Now, I'm a huge fan of Proton and having the option to install either Windows or Linux and get effectively the same gaming experience is a great thing. And I think that as Proton and SteamOS continue to evolve and mature, I think the list of games that are available on the platform is only going to increase, and that is a great thing for gamers overall. However, if you picked up the Steam Deck hoping to install Windows on the device, there's a lot left to be desired, and we shouldn't be relying on stuff that was said over a month ago to provide feedback to Valve today. So guys, I urge you to reach out and say that you're not satisfied with the current state of the graphics driver available in Windows. There's other pieces of hardware that aren't functioning in Windows itself, so Valve should deliver on their promises in enabling us to install whatever we want on our Steam Deck. But that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit thumbs up, comment down below on things I've missed or what you thought of the video. And as always, I can catch you over on Twitter, Discord, all the other different social media websites. So Turk Force, catch you later.